Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Town of Tewksbury Zoning Board of Appeals. Today is uh, February 23rd, 2023. I'd like to call the uh, meeting to order. First on our list is the uh, approval of our meeting minutes for our November 17th, 2022, December 29th, 2022, and January 26th, 2023. Take no, we can make a motion. Now move to uh, approve the minutes from November 17th, 2022, November 29, 2022, and January 26, 2023. I'll start them up. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Right into our hearings. First uh, up is Aaron Kelly for a variance under section 5.3.2 for of the Tuxbury Zoning Ball Law for um, Front yard setbacks and special permit under section 8.1.1.c to alter a previously existing non conforming structure in order to construct a second floor addition, a three, a three foot six by four side deck and a five by seven eighths front deck with a hip roof as shown on plans filed with the board. Said property is located at 45 Highland Ave, Assessor's Map 3, Lot, Zoned 43, Zoned Residential. Yes, please. And who are the voting members on it? The voting members are myself, Mike, and Rob. Hi. Hi. Uh, name and address for the board, please. My name is Erin Kelly, and I'm a resident and the homeowner of 45 Highland Avenue. Great. Why don't you tell us what you're uh, trying to do? Yeah, absolutely. So um, our house is a small kind of raised ranch, expanded cape. It's our expanded ranch, um, small cape. Uh, we have a family of four now, two growing kids. So uh, we want to just make some more room. So we're looking to add um, like a bigger family room and a master suite to the to a full second floor. Um, we're also um, looking to replace the current like really poor set of side stairs with a new set of side stairs and um, add, actually it says a front deck, but we're looking to add a deck in the back. So it won't go um, to, towards the front anymore. Um, the five by seven or five by seven and eight inch deck would be in the backyard. Um, we are looking to add a small hip roof over our ex ex existing front stairs. So we knew that our house is older and so that it might be not in compliance with the front setback rules. So that's why we are proposing to go up and not out. Okay. Did you put this packet together? I did. Yeah. One of the nicest ones we've seen in a while. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah, no problem. Yeah, you can see in the design that the current second floor, it's just one small, tiny room that's up there. And so we'll add quite a bit more square footage without moving closer to the street on either side. Do you have, if you don't mind, no. that's what you have now, right? Mm -hmm. Do you have a print, uh, an overlay of what it'll be when you're done? Mm -hmm. No, it oh, no, it wouldn't change except for like I said, a deck on the back. So you're not going any closer to the front? No, nope. she said she's leaving that as is and just putting the little uh, roof on top. It's yeah. just a little roof on the existing stairs. That's all she's putting there in front of that. It's already there. Okay. So you're keeping the same footprint. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Actually, even the back deck won't extend beyond our existing garage. Okay. <laughs> so, which I know that doesn't impact anyone besides us anyways, but All right. yeah, it's not changing the home's footprint in any way. Okay. Will the, um, will the hip roof, hip roof 
be any closer than the stairs? No. It'll just cover the landing. Yeah, that's a corner need, lot. That's yeah. why you need the, uh, so you have two fronts. So there you go. So on your side deck. Mm -hmm. It'll just be stairs and it will actually, because the stairs will turn to the side, it will be less of a setback than the existing stairs. Right, but your setback's not on your stairs, it's on your house. Right, so, so you're it's gonna... not a deck that's being added, it's just stairs for the egress. We're just replacing an existing stairwell. Okay, no deck? No deck. But it confused me because it said side deck. On the like denial letter? On the application. Well, that, yeah, because that's what they wrote on the denial mm -hmm. letter, but that's not what's and, there, what we're doing. And your front deck? There's no front deck. Is actually a back deck. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, and the hip roof is in the front. Exactly. So you got three different things going on here. You're building a hip roof, you're building a deck off the back. Mm -hmm and you replace replacing a set of stairs, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Awesome. <clears throat> Is there anything else you want to add? No, I mean, like I said, we're not trying to right. impact the neighborhood in any way, except hopefully by increasing the value of our home, increasing the neighborhood, or improving the neighborhood. Okay. Um, being a public hearing, is there anything anybody wants to add? No? Board, anything you want to add, Jay? No, I'm good, thank you. No? I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. So we're putting a second floor on. Mm -hmm. We're adding a set of stairs. Mm -hmm. We're adding a deck in the back. And we're adding a hip roof in the front. Yeah. Technically replacing a set of stairs. Replacing a set of stairs. Well, they're going to go up to the second floor now, right? No. Still on the first floor? Yep. Okay. No, no, I don't have any questions. Mm -hmm. I don't have any questions. I just have one quick one. No, so it's a three by six by four. It's, it's not a side deck. It's a side stairs, right? It's side stairs. So I should say stairs, right? Yeah. Okay. The, yeah. And I did. You did say that before. I just yeah. to no, no, no. I was told that my application had to match the denial letter, even though I didn't think the denial letter was accurate with the designs submitted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. No. Thank you all. I appreciate your time. See, the, the only thing I'm concerned about here mm -hmm. is if you look at the denial letter, right? Yeah. They reference Island Ave. So they reference the front of the house. Right. And he's saying it's going to be approximately 14 feet from Highland Ave. But we're not building a front deck. Exactly. Well, that's why That's why he denied it. Denied. I know, and I, I was told that I had to come here. <laughs> well, you, you do need it. Yeah. I just, I don't like the way it's worded, because you're, you're adding a hip roof, right? Yes, to it's an existing, five, yeah. five feet coming off the house, seven foot eight wide, or the other way around? The, 
back deck will be five feet, seven eighths inches. Mm -hmm. I think they, I don't understand why they wrote the letter this way and I, I did question it. How big is the hip roof? The hip roof, um, I'm not exactly sure, but it's the, it's just going to cover the top landing of the existing stairwell. Or stairwell is not the right word, but the existing front stairs. Four feet? Maybe. Maybe not even, yeah. No, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I just. Is it in the design? He's got it, he's got it listed at three feet. Right? And we always say what plans followed with this board. If the thing's four feet, now you're in a jam. Right? Because it, it is. That, that roof is part of the house. Right. So you, you have to you have to use it as your line. Mm -hmm. Right. Can't believe this, but I don't think I have a copy of the designs with me. I think maybe on the side design, on the side profile of the house, it shows that the design is to stop at the... Oh, but wait, there's more. Yeah, perfect system. Yep, that's on there. <coughs> I mean, here it shows, it's right here. dimensions for everything like that. Everywhere else it stays up with the sizes are of everything except for the hip group. It does list the exterior doors 32 inches wide. But not that hip. No. Everything else is listed but that. But the planning? Yeah, that piece. It doesn't Every, everything else has the size to yeah, it. Everything, but not that. But it's not showing that it's even going over the front step. I see what you're saying about the deck. That's not going to extend any further than uh, your house. Yeah, and it's in the back. Yeah. I'm okay with it. I just I want to get it right. Mm -hmm. That's all. I understand. Robert, this letter has been bothering me for a long time. See page number two. It kind of shows the side elevation. Yes. With the uh, no hip roof. No, no dimensions. No dimensions at all. We call out that the hip roof yep. is above, mm -hmm. above the front landing. Because it is shown, but it's not. No, it is. It, it's shown, so. No, no, I'm just good. Three foot six by four foot 
is a staircase, right? Mm -hmm. So it's side stairs. Right. Five by seven, eight. Five by seven is a back deck. With a front hip roof. No, I, I, I take that right out. Not even with because it's not with it. You're right, it's not. Should we say and? Yep. Yep. And a front hip roof. I put front hip roof. Front hip hip roof mm -hmm, mm -hmm. above front landing. Yep. That's what I put. We make the motion to close both parts. I'm moving to close both parts. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Would uh, Rob, could you make the motion? Motion uh, to make that motion. <laughs> I'd like to make a motion to approve Aaron Kelly for a special permit under section 8.1.1 to alter a previously existing non conforming structure. Mm -hmm in order to construct a second floor addition. Now let's go with the whole thing. Construct a second floor addition with a three foot by six foot, three foot by six, I'm gonna try again. Mm -hmm. Three foot six by four foot side stairs, mm -hmm. a five foot by seven foot eight inch back deck, mm -hmm. also a hip roof above the front landing. Said property is located at 45 Highland Ave, assessment now 3, lot 43, zone residential. Second. Yeah. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Aye. I'd like to make a second motion for Aaron Kelly for a variance under section 5.3.2 of the Tewksbury zoning bylaw for front yard setbacks. to construct a second floor addition, a three foot, six inch by four foot side set of stairs, a five foot by seven foot, eight inch back deck, and also a hip roof above the front landing. As shown on plans filed with this board, said property is located at 45 Island Ave, assesses map three, lot 43 zone residential. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, your proof. Thank you very much. Thank you. Luck, you too. Thank you. Thank you for the packet again. <laughs> okay, next up we have Mark and Lisa Paradis for a variance under section 5.3.1 E3 of the Tewksbury Zoning Bylaws for an uh, accessory structure within front setbacks for an 18 inch round above ground pool ash and mom plans filed with the board. Set property, property is located at 1456 Ripple Road. Set map 56, lot 28, zoned residential. And who are the voting members on this one? And the voting members are you three gentlemen. Name and address for the board, please. Lisa Paradise, 1456 Whipple Road. Mark Paradise, 1456 Whipple Road. Could you tell us a little bit about what you're trying to do here, please? So we want to install an 18-foot round swimming pool. If you look at our plot plan, you can see that our house sits at an angle on the lot, and there's no other place to put it other than it over sticking the front of the structure. Um, we've tried to move, we worked with the, um, the guy that did the plot plan. If we move it any further back, it won't be 15 feet off of uh, the, the property line. And if we moved it off the neighbor's 15 feet, then it sits on our back stairs. 
we have we do have the front around that fenced in if you'd like to see I have a few pictures on my phone so you wouldn't even see the pool from the street and we have a very large front yard as you can see there's no other place to put a pool you're all front heavy not back heavy yeah but, uh, and there's but, woods behind us there's woods right behind us. So but the, we do have a fence then it fences in a it goes around. It would be around so, where the pool is. It's already completely fenced in if you'd like to see a picture. Thank you. I'll probably will in a minute. And we only have one, actually one neighbor it would affect because nobody is behind us. And the neighbor to the left of us, he, he doesn't have an issue. He, he has a pool as well in his yard. But there's just no other place that we could locate a, a swimming pool and I have health issues that I need to use a non-weight bearing for physical therapy. Is that nothing at all behind you? Just that's, woods? That's, it's woods and it's, it's a woods. pond. It's a, it's actually, it's not a pond, but. It's a man-made It's pond. a man-made, what they did was they <clears throat> ran water down from uh, Robert Circle and all that down into there, so it fills well, up. Us and the neighbor used to be one big lot. And we've owned the house almost 10 years. And at some point they split the lot. So mm. their lot is huge next door. Mm. And they built the house that we're in, which was the original house. Just a, a, a quick question on, on the lot behind you that it's a wetland, it's a wet, it's, it's not wetland. It's, it's, it's not, not wetlands. wetlands, it's just all woods that is owned by okay. It's the owned neighbor. by the Lamonis. Oh, and Lamonis. I see two structures on there, is that two, Nothing. Nothing? No. What about, uh, I guess there's you a see a barn. There's a barn. Oh, there's back there. yeah. There's I was just going to say that there's yeah. an indicator. There, there right is there. an indicator that there's it's a barn an back there. Two old, old barn. It's, I guess it used to be an old horse farm, and the original barn. That's on. That's not our structure. That's the neighbor's structure. We have a shed. That's not on there. It might be on that. It's two. The shed's on this one. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to look to see what's on there. I'm curious. Oh, so one is the house. Yeah. Yeah. The big one, the, the perfectly square one is their house next door. And then the small one behind it is a barn oh, okay. that's just an old ramshackled. It's ready to fall down. <laughs> Surprise all these storms that hasn't yet. Yeah, why our house was built at an angle, I don't know why. Join the clutch. It's probably built at an angle so you could get your gear. Um, your your side setbacks. My side what? Setbacks. Side setbacks. Side setbacks. Mm -hmm. Nah, you could have moved that. Mm -hmm. They could have squared that out. Yeah, it makes no sense. 
Some guy with a mechanical pencil getting creative. We'll build it like this. Well, actually, this was the original house, and they built the house next door when they split the lot. This house, I guess, was built in four sections. And if you want, I could show you the... Uh... Yes, I'd like to see the front, please. <laughs> so this is the front of the house. And we have it fenced in already. And the pool wouldn't come all the way up to the fence anyways. Need to remote on this. So it's already fenced in, and this is, I know it shows a picture of, right. this is a telephone. Where is it on there? I have a telephone trailer. That's a, I don't know, a, a Verizon Utility pole, box. Utility then, box. Oh, yeah, it's, oh, no, it's just a Verizon pole. Which we had a fence oh, pole, in around. Right. So it's inside. <laughs> oh, wow. It's just for the high wire. It's just for the cable, for the cable wire. Yeah. yeah oh, that's, 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 so the pole's behind the fence? Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. And the pool will be behind the fence as well? Yes. Yeah, yeah the pool will be behind the fence. Okay. There's nothing on that side. It's completely fenced in all the way around. So you took the picture from behind your house? No, this is actually that's the, that's from, from my front yard. My front yard. Uh, that's in my driveway. Yeah, that's all oh, oh, my driveway. Down. You don't see anything past that. Oh, on, on, yeah, on their yard behind the fence. Okay. Yeah, so you wouldn't see anything from the front. No, no, so here's the I'm just thinking of the pole. <laughs> and this is where, <clears throat> Yeah, that's actually standing in my driveway, looking this way. This is the driveway. <clears throat> okay. See, so this is my driveway right here. So I'm looking oh, to my neighbor's house. Oh, you're looking at your neighbor's, okay. So the pool would be behind this, and Ripple Road is still way out here. You, this is your house here? Yes. And, then, and this is my driveway. And this is the fence. And the fence the pool will be the outside of the fence. Yes. So this is where I'm standing right here. All right. So I'm standing here. The fence actually comes down here. This is fenced in. And it goes like this. So the pool would be behind the fence because the fence is around this. The fence goes way out here. I, I understand exactly what I'm hiding. Thank you. Do you have any more questions, Rob? I do not. No, no, no I'm good. Okay. Um, if, being an open hearing, anybody have anything they want to add? Okay. Somebody make a motion, please. I need to close it. Yeah, both parts of the Somebody want a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Right. Aye. Okay, somebody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion for a variance uh, under section 5.3.1E3 of the Tuxbury Zoning Bylaw for an accessory structure within front side backs for an 18 foot round above ground pool. Shown in plans filed with this board. The said property is located at 1456. Whipple Road assesses map 56, lot 28, zone resident. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Okay, you're approved. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good night. Have a good night. You as well. Thank Enjoy. you. Thank Enjoy. You. All right, careful. <clears throat> Next, we have Weston and Sampson on behalf of the town of Tewksbury DPW. For a variance under sections 5.3.1 E1 and 5.3.1 E3 of the Tewksbury Zoning Bylaw for an accessory structure within front setbacks and an accessory structure exceeding 1.5 stories or 20 feet in height related to the constructions of the new 40. 3,700 square foot building as shown on the plans filed with the board. That property is located at 999 Liberal Road, Assessor's Map 30, Lot 26, Zoned Residential. Good evening, gentlemen. Name and address for the board, please. 
Good evening. Uh, Madam Chair, Kevin Hardin, I'm the Public Works Director for the Town of Tewksbury, uh, here with Tyler Kofalice from Weston and Sampson and Tony Westpizer from Weston and Sampson uh, on behalf of the, uh, the Public Works and the project at hand. Uh, Tony has a, a short presentation to provide some additional information to the board if that's okay. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. As Kevin said, my name is Tony Westpizer. I'm with Weston and Sampson, and I'm here tonight to present the new DBW and school maintenance facility to the Zoning Board of Appeals and discuss the variants that we're looking for. The project, the property is located at 999 Whipple Road in Tewksbury. For anybody who's not familiar with that location in town, it's on the southern portion of town indicated by the red star on this slide. This is an aerial photograph of the site. It comes across as a little faint on this, but I think we'll be able to get the message across with this slide as it is. Whipple Road is on the east side of the site, Pine Street on the south side, and then the wing-shaped building in the middle is the existing DPW facility. This is another aerial photograph, a site on view this time, but that same wing-shaped existing DPW facility highlighted in yellow. This is a snip from the town's tax maps. The lot is 30-26, it's a little more than 21 acres, and we do want to point out that the property runs from Whipple Road on the east side to Pond Street on the west side. Under the new zoning bylaws, the property is zoned as Residence 40. However, when the project started, it was zoned as municipal. Because of this recent change in the bylaws, we'll need to get a variance from the Zoning Board of Appeals for two of the existing buildings, which become accessory structures in the redevelopment. And I'll discuss that a little bit more in a few minutes. As far as allowable uses, the DPW and school maintenance operations are municipal uses, which are allowed in the Residence 40 district. And with respect to dimensional requirements, the project is compliant with the frontage and setback, as well as dimensional requirements. Just talk a little bit about what is proposed. We have a new building and associated site development with limited renovation of the existing building. This is a uh, site plan for the overall developed site. The highlighted yellow is the redevelopment area. Then the new building is in the light tan color there. And I do want to point out at this point that to the back of the new building is a small pocket of unsuitable soil. Um, the unsuitable, the nature of that unsuitable soil is a stump landfill, which I'd also like to note is just, just buried stumps, very common at DPW facilities throughout New England. Uh, however, DEP does regulate them, so, um, and we're working with DEP on, on that aspect of it. But um, where it is unsuitable material, it, it is costly to build over them, and that will become a factor on a slide that I'll point out a little bit later in the presentation. We did provide a, uh, or prepare a perspective, a 3D perspective from Pond. Um, I'm sorry, from Pine Street, um, the red arrow indicates the viewpoint. Again, the red arrow and the viewpoint, and this is a 3D rendering or perspective of the building from Pine Street. So, the reason why we're here tonight is that um, under, well, I'm sorry, I'm just get my bearings here. Um, Oh, as shown on the previous slides, the new operations building will be the principal building on the site, and the existing buildings will become accessory structures. So as I mentioned a few minutes ago, we're seeking a variance for two of these structures, one for height and one for location relative to the front building line. So that's the new building as the principal structure and the two accessory structures. This is a SNP from paragraph 5.3.1. With regard to the height requirement, the existing building um, has a height of 20 feet 8 inches compared to a, a limit 
of 20 feet, so we're a little bit higher than the limit. I do have a slide that shows the part of the building that does exceed that limit, the actual height of 20 um, feet, eight inches, versus the limit by the bylaw. So we did look at options for addressing that height restriction. One option might be to demolish the existing DPW facility. However, we found that to be infeasible or not feasible because it would eliminate 20,000 square feet of much needed vehicle storage space, indoor vehicle storage space. So a large portion of the fleet would end up being stored outdoors. That results in a significant financial burden to the town associated with accelerated deterioration as well as replacement of the town's multi-million dollar fleet. There would be potential impacts to public safety associated with the delayed DPW response time due to that exterior storage. That has to do with cold weather starting, vehicle prep time, and so forth, as well as a potential impact to employee safety associated with exterior storage. That has to do with cleaning off large equipment of snow and ice, climbing on it when it's slippery, um, and presents some safety issues, as well as safety issues with connecting equipment outdoors, plows with hydraulic lines and so forth in rainy, snowy conditions. Another option we looked at and considered not feasible was replacing the existing DPW facility with a second new structure eight inches lower, found that to be cost prohibitive and a significant burden um, financially to the town's taxpayers. With regard to the front building line, the existing food pantry, which has always been there, uh, and this is relative to paragraph three of this section um, and the front building line, I, I have a slide that illustrates this. We're gonna zoom in on this portion of the site. That's the new building and the front building, oh, I'm sorry, food pantry first. I switched this up late this afternoon. Front building line, and if we extend that front building line across, we pick up the um, food pantry and find that the, a portion of the food pantry is not behind the front building line. One thing I do wanna point out is that this portion of the building is the administrative offices and is a bid alternate. And in the event the town does not pick up that bid alternate and proceed with it, then the front building line ends up actually becoming back here as the, um, and you can see on the right hand side, we um, clip a, just a small corner of the existing building. We looked at options and found them not feasible for the front building line. One option would be to ro ro relocate the food pantry to behind that front building line. This would result in intermixing of food pantry traffic with DPW traffic at the back of the site and the DPW's large and heavy duty vehicles that would create public safety issues. It would be de detri detrimental to the DPW operations as far as interference with those operations potentially and also represents a financial hardship to address on the unsuitable soil conditions behind the principal structure that I mentioned earlier in the presentation, the, that is the um, stump landfill. Another option might be to shift the location of the principal building closer to Pine Street, but there's not a lot of room right there as it is, and that would require moving the public parking area to the rear of the site, which in turn comes back to that intermixing of public traffic with the DPW traffic. Uh, again, a public safety issue. And another option might be to locate the principal building off of Pine Street. That would um, require significant filling of wetlands as well as significant and costly earthwork. Those two um, activities would be detrimental to the environment as well as cost prohibitive and a financial burden to taxpayers. Pine Street. That was Pine, right? I'm sorry, yes. I, um, I, I, Earlier in the presentation, I referred to Pond Street when I meant Pine Street, so I guess that's getting back at me. I apologize. Um, is, is that clear to everybody? I can go through that again. It's Pond Street. I guess. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. So in summary, granting relief from the accessory structure requirements 
will not result in a substantial detriment to the public good, and it would constitute a benefit to the town and public good in that it would be safer, it would keep the public traffic and DPW operations separate from one another, it would allow the existing DPW to provide indoor vehicle storage to protect the environment and the town's fleet, it would, be, it would provide more efficient response times, improving um, public safety. It provides a safer work environment for the town staff. And the benefits gained from relief of these requirements do not require, I'm sorry, do not conflict with the intent of the Tewksbury bylaws, which are to promote the general welfare of the town and protect health and safety of the town and its inhabitants. That is the end of my presentation. We're happy to take any questions you may have. Before we changed zoning and put you in a residential, would you have needed anything? To no. Do this project was already underway? Correct. The, without getting too far into the details, there were exemptions that covered these issues within the prior zoning bylaws. That's correct. Front building line of the new building, yes. Is it the new building meets the setbacks on the front and it pushes the food pantry? Is that what's happening there? The food pantry is not moving. It's located where it's always been. We don't propose to move it. It's situating the new building <laughs> compliant with the towns and zoning bylaw setbacks, but the food pantry where it's always been ends up in front of that front building line. Okay. Does, does that make sense? Yes, yeah, yeah. That's what's happening there, that when you guys make that front setback, the food pantry is now in compliance with that. Correct. Out of compliance, yep. What happens if the administration portion of that building isn't built? Can we see you again? We are asking for a variance for those two situations that um, if it's not built, then it's actually two accessory structures that fall a little bit um, in front of the front building line. Mm -hmm. So if we were to... If, oh. Well, if I, if I could, it, my understanding is if the administrative offices aren't moved into the new building, mm -hmm. then the existing building is still the primary structure on the site. That, that's what houses our offices. Um, mm, I don't think so, Kevin. We've been... We've been Am I actually contradicting the client um, here on, on stage? We consider the new principal, the, the new building to be the principal structure because of the it's the base of the main operation. So yeah, I, I, I think that's something we'd have to, okay. to investigate. Um, you know, because our current operations are in that front building. Um, you know, the new building will house fleet maintenance, which is ancillary to our operations, uh, vehicle storage, which is ancillary to our operations, as well as, uh, you know, shops and, uh, you know, locker rooms and things like that. Uh, a couple offices for administrative staff, but the main administrative functions of the, the facility will remain in that front building. Uh, you know, but to, to speak to Tony's point is, if that, 
administrative offices aren't built yet that new building is considered the primary building, mm -hmm. then we would need the variance to cover both the food pantry and the existing building as accessory structures in front of the primary structure. And right now you only need the food pantry. Correct. Well, right. if I could rephrase that, what, what we're asking for, what, what I was intending to ask for was that we get approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals for both buildings with respect to that front building line. That way, if we ended up not going forward with the administrative offices under the bid alternate, we would not need to come back and it would, because um, then the other building, the existing DPW, the front building line comes into effect. So if we got the approval for both of them, it would seem like maybe we don't need to come back to the ZBA. Did I answer your question? Did we answer your question? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm with you. I just don't know if we can. Because what you're asking for basically is if you go this way, you want the variance. And if you go this way, you want the variance. How do we do that with children with plants found up with this board? Was all part of that presentation who showed both ways whether they have the front structure or not. So it really was filed with the board. Because if you remember, he outlined the front. Oh, I remember. Okay. Thank you. Um, is it really building specific? Though? Right. And how's it written? Nancy. Yes. The board members? It's the three of you guys. Okay. <clears throat> if you read the right? three. Yeah. It's not really building specific. Right. If you read E3, it just says an accessory structure. Mm -hmm. It should not be located. Well, he's got two accessory structures. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we got to do that. Mm -hmm. I think if it's got three down the Any way you go, that building's still going to be 20 right. foot 8 inches tall, right? Correct. you wanted to add? Being a public hearing, anybody else want to say anything? Uh, please go up to the podium over there and name an address for the board, please. Um, my name is William Duras. I live at 988 Report Road, right across the street. And I just wonder, what are they going to do with all that stuff that they keep in the back of the building? This looks like this new building is going to be, you know, they keep all the leaves and all that debris in the back of the building. Is that going to move somewhere? No, there, uh, there is going to be some tree clearing. We can address the board. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's uh, fine. No chair. Uh, so we are going to do some tree clearing on the, the western side. Uh, we've actually been working with a contractor to remove a lot of that material uh, that we're using on other projects throughout town for water line replacement and things like that. Okay. Okay. And uh, this, is, this has nothing to do with the, the land that's cleared in the back, right, where they were going to build new houses there on Pond Street? No. It's got nothing to do with that land. Not to my knowledge, correct? No. 
that's a correct. whole different. Correct. It does not have anything to do no, with that parcel. Yeah, that's that's a new place they're building for veterans. No, 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 no. no, no. It's with talking? veterans. Used to, well, I mean, the place used to be. They're going to supposed to build five new homes here, but it, it never started. It used to. Be. What okay. was it? The DAV. Yeah, the DAV used to be there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not even your property, right? No, it's not. No. DAV was. Okay. no, it's nothing to do with them. And if this gets all approved, when do the, when would this start? The project would go out to bid in mid-April and start construction um, in June of mm -hmm. this coming summer, 2023. Sorry. Thank you. No, that's quite all right. All right. Just those are the questions I had. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? No? Somebody like to make a motion? Move to close both parts of the hearing. I second. All in favor? Oh, aye. 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 Okay. Um, who'd like to make the motion? I can make it. Jeff, please. I'd like to make a motion to accept the DPW variance under section 5.3.1 E1 and 5.3.1 E3 of the Tewksbury zone bylaws for accessory structure within front setbacks and accessory structure exceeding. 1.5 stories or 20 foot in height related to the construction of a new 43,700 square foot building as shown on plans filed with this board. Said property located at 999 Whipple Road, assesses map 30, lot 26, zone residential. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <clears throat> Margaret S. O'Brien, Chair of Johnson and Bornstein, LLC, under Mass General Laws, Chapter 40A, Section 8, is a party grieved by a decision made by the building inspector and letter dated December 9th, 2020, to construct a 40 by 60 single family dwelling with a 30 by 60 garage. Said property is located at Gloucester Lane, Assessor's Map 24. Lot 26, zoned residential. And this is continued from um, last month, 126.23. Name and address, please. My name is Kevin O'Brien. I am the applicant. I'm from 18 Casimir Street, Andover, Mass. Okay, can you talk about what's going on here, please? Well, was, I am the applicant on this case. Um, we were asked if we would, that it has been requested of us that we provide a statement of our position as, a, as to the legal right to access the property over Foster Lane. My lawyer is on vacation this week, but last week he actually sent a letter to your department on uh, February 16th. We're asking that that letter be sent to your town council for their, their review. And it will be the three of us voting, um, Mike, myself, and Rob.
When was when did your attorney send this letter? I believe he sent it either Thursday or Friday of last week. Okay. So it's not just one dated April 14th of 2022. No, that was a letter that was sent to the building inspector on April. Um, requesting the building permit. So tonight you're just asking for the letter that your attorney sent on Friday to be forwarded to town council for his review? That is correct. Okay. I'm sorry? And we'd like to continue the hearing until the next meeting of course and capital because you have had a chance to communicate. Gotcha. So we're going to continue this for next month? But I know you'll have people here on it. I, I didn't hear, sir. What did you just say? You have people here that probably want to be heard, so I'm not looking to just. Okay, so you would like, so what do you want us to consider right now? Is this something you want us to push out for another month? Well, well I'm going to ask you to continue it for another month. But if, if there's any input from neighbors or anybody, we'd certainly like to take that with sure, us. I mean, maybe have it in the next month. He's asking to continue. So what he's asking for is his attorney sent a letter to right. our office. Right. Which and he'd like to be continued to have town council have a look at that letter. Mm-hmm. So we just want to push this off until that's done. Mm -hmm. yep. That's the initial that. That was the initial. Do you even have to open it up before pushing it out? Uh, I wouldn't. No. I don't want to. Okay. That being said, then we'll push this out till next month. Um, is there, Attorney Plunkett, is there something you wanted to add? Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, for the record, David Plunkett, an office at uh, 491 Dutton Street, Lowell, resided 257 Fifth Street in Tewksbury. Here tonight, representing JDB Realty Trust LLC, owner of the property at 173 Dixon Avenue, directly abutting this parcel. On the assessor's map, it's parcel 2470. Uh, 2427 that is owned by my client. Uh, Madam Chair, if we could, I'd, I'd like to get a copy of that letter and I would ask for ability to submit to the board <clears throat> tonight a uh, decision of the Appellate Court of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts from 1994 in which the issue relative to the property owned by Mr. O'Brien and the rights to access Foster Lane was the focus point of that litigation and the appeals court made the determination that they had no right of access over Foster Lane. And I'd like to submit to the board to have in the record the decision of the appellate court from 1994 and also make the request that we receive a copy of the letter that was submitted here for the public hearing tonight. Okay. Um, do we have to take that to Thank you. come downstairs? Mm -hmm. We'll have to bring it down or we'll eat in the window. Thanks. Attorney Plunkett, will you be submitting this as well? With yes. Thank, thank you. With the town, I just want to make sure that. And in, this is on record in the town. The uh, town clerk's office has a copy of it back in 1994 when the initial decision of the uh, planning board to allow a subdivision of the so-called twist law, the college lot was allowed, the appellate court uh, overturned it and uh, said that it was, uh, it was basically reversed a new judgment to be entered that annulled the decision. And in the decision, it sets forth the rationale that uh, the, in fact, that the, uh, the defendant makes reference to the conclusion that the defendant had access over, uh, uh, over uh, Foster Lane. He says the, the right of access over Foster Lane is clearly erroneous. 
Uh, it also went into detail relative to the fact that there's no rights of easement, estoppel arguments, or anything else, that the twist lot is a stranger to the J.W. Wilbur parcel that created these lots, and therefore a stranger to the parcel has no right of access over any way that's shown on it. And again, that was the same party that's before uh, the uh, you know, ZBA here tonight. Mr. O'Brien at that time was the direct owner. At this time, its uh, title is held by his uh, wife. And, uh, but same, same issue, same party. Conclusion should be the same. We're in agreement with the building inspector that this lot is not a buildable lot, which they're trying to overturn, requesting the ZBA to overturn that decision of the, uh, of the building commissioner. And we say that we support and that the building commissioner is correct, that it is not a buildable lot. The only thing that we would point out, however, in the decision, the building commissioner indicates that it's not a buildable lot because it doesn't have 150 feet frontage and it only shows 120 feet of frontage. But the reality is that frontage that is on the uh, Foster Lane is not accessible because of the fact that it doesn't, he has zero right of access over Foster Lane and therefore he has zero frontage for determination of a buildable lot. Okay. I just ask that you please just forward this info to um, the town. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, does somebody, uh, is there anybody else that want to say anything? No? Okay. Um, somebody want to make a motion to push this off to our next meeting? I'll make a motion that we continue. Margaret S. O'Brien, care of Johnson and Borstein LLC, to our next meeting, which is March 30th, 2023, at 6.30 p.m. Nice. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. See you in a month. See you in a month. OK. Um, any old business? New no. business? No. Nope. Yes, that's an idea. Okay. Um, somebody want to make a motion to adjourn? So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, Jeff.